Hi, I'm Doug Olenek, online editor for SC Magazine, and I'm here today with Stu Showerman, CEO of Know Before. How are you today, Stu? I'm great, thanks. Wonderful. I'd like to talk a little bit about ransomware today, if we, if we may. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, first off, do you think there's a, a technical way to actually stop ransomware, or is the best we can hope to do is contain it? Well, over time, there probably will be technical controls to, to block ransomware. Think back to the early days where there was antivirus and there was anti-spyware. And remember that you had separate anti-spyware tools and slowly over time the antivirus industry either bought them or added anti-spyware features. You're going to see the same thing with endpoint security now where the AV vendors slowly but surely are going to add uh, kind of protection against ransomware, but for the moment, it's not really very good yet. So the answer is, we're not quite sure? The answer is, over the next few years, you will see protection against ransomware. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you need to train your users. <laughs> this year, the healthcare industry has been one of the primary targets for ransomware. Uh, do you see that staying the same? Do you see them shifting their targets to uh, someone who might be more vulnerable? Well, the bad guys really are looking for soft targets. So um, what we found is that indeed you, you're having a whole massive attack on healthcare, and that is still going on, but they have also moved on to education. We're talking school systems, universities, which traditionally also are fairly soft targets to get into. Now, are they finding that the information they're stealing overly valuable or do they, are they just trying to steal so much of it that they can sell it in bulk and make a, a few bucks? You know, it isn't really a, a matter of selling it. It is much more a matter of causing so much damage because of downtime that, for instance, a hospital, if all the doctors and nurses aren't able to get to the information of their patients um, and have to send patients over to other hospitals, mm -hmm. which literally has happened, um, they're really focusing on damage and downtime and to try as much as possible to um, cause urgency so that their ransom gets paid as quick as possible. These guys are in it for fast money, mm -hmm. not so much stealing the records and selling them later. Right. Now, to pull out your prognosticator hat a little bit, can you give an idea if you think um, ransomware is going to continue to be the big threat next year, or will something else surpass it? I have bad news. Um, ransomware is only really at the early stages. Um, if you look at the total amount of infections, ransomware is still in the single digits. But it's by far the biggest worry for IT pros uh, at this point. So ransomware is going to get a lot worse before it's going to get better. And is the low bar to entry now for criminals who wish to uh, utilize a ransomware attack part of the problem? There is this ransomware as a service, which allows any beginning cyber criminal to just subscribe to a platform, pay 30% or 20% and keep the rest and start sending out their campaigns. So there is a very low barrier to entry at the moment. Uh, there is about 10 or 15 different, we call them strains. Um, these strains, sometimes they keep them for themselves, like Locky, um, which is a highly organized cyber mafia. We're talking organized internet crime. Others do their own thing, but also essentially rent their code out to you know beginners and try to leverage uh, their code to make a maximum criminal profit. <laughs> now this is going off the beaten path a tiny bit but you just brought up the word mafia. Now yes. in the United States the mafia has found itself involved in just about anything it can manage to get itself involved in. That's true. Would you ever see that uh, see that level, that type of an organized crime organization? At the moment you are really looking at organized crime in Eastern Europe um, which have moved into this particular racket. Um, the, the, the situation in Eastern Europe is somewhat troublesome because we don't have any law enforcement over there. That they're, they're not cooperating. In fact they're getting air cover. 
if you are in Russia and hack outside of Russia, there's very little chance you're going to be caught. Mm -hmm. Same with Ukraine. And so um, there are whole office buildings full of people that start at nine, leave at six, have lunch break, and with a bit of luck, they have health insurance, and the whole thing is a criminal enterprise. Mm -hmm. Because in Ukraine, it's not illegal to hack outside of the country. Most people don't know that. So this is an ongoing organized criminal kind of uh, racket. And until we get our defenses in place, this is not going to get any better. <laughs> OK, great. Well, Stu, thank you very much for being here. We greatly appreciate it. Again, I'm Doug Olenek, online editor for SC Magazine.